Hello and welcome to Home Practice. This session is all about dancing from the centre. Hello and welcome to Home Practice. My name is Lucy. I have dark curly hair tied up in a ponytail. I have white skin, freckles, and I'm a non-disabled dancer. Today I'm wearing purple trousers and a black t-shirt with the slogan, Abnormally Funny People. I'm in a bright light room with a wooden floor. This session is all about getting you connected to your center so we can practice moving from our core. We're gonna start quite quickly to build some heat and bring an awareness to our center. So we're gonna start with our hands over one another and placed on our center. Now your center may be somewhere different to mine and that's okay. Find a place where you feel you have the potential to build some strength and start some energy up. We're going to start by rubbing in circle around our center. And we're gonna do this for a count of eight. And you can do this as fast and as firm as you want to go today. Then we're gonna brush across our center, releasing the hands almost as if we're trying to light a match. You can open up to the corners. You can go a bit slower or you can go double time but we'll do it for a count of eight. From there, we're gonna cross the hands, brush down the side of the thighs, as low as you can go today, cross again, and come up the sides of the IT bands. And hopefully you'll be able to get two of those in, but one is fine as well. From here, we're gonna take some side bends, as if we're in, two, in between two plates of glass. And you're gonna open up those ribs, by brushing up to your armpit, and then the other arm is brushing down the sides of the thigh. Or, if you're seated in a chair, you might want to brush down the front of your thigh. Then, we're gonna bring some heat to a place that you need to bring heat to. I'm gonna go for my quads, but you might wanna make some space for your lower back, or bring some heat to your chest. So we really vigorously rub for eight counts to bring some warmth. And then we're gonna take an upward stretch by reaching the heels of the hands towards the screen and up to the ceiling. Push the ceiling away and press the heels or the sits bones down towards the ground and find a two-way stretch. Maybe imagine a greyhound belly, the dog, the greyhound, and it being long and lean as you reach up to the ceiling. From here, we're gonna press the palms down to make a T-shape, rolling down through the spine, starting with the skull, upper back, middle back, hanging over. From here, I want you to try and start a little fire in your center, so bring some strength or heat. I'm gonna go down into press up, and I'm then gonna take my knees to my armpits, so that I feel like I'm building a little bit of strength in my center. If you're using a wheelchair, you may want to go into a wheelie and swap hands on the wheels so that you find a bit of instability that makes you work your center. Okay, enough talking, let's get going. Find your working position. We're gonna bring the music on. We're gonna rub our hands vigorously. Bring some heat. Get some warmth. As fast as you can go today. It's a stopgap favorite, starting with some touch and brush. And then we're gonna take it to our center. Deep breath in, breathing out. Breathe into those palms, deep breath in. Breathing out, getting ready to go. 
five, four, three, two, circle. Seven, eight, brush across. Ha, ha, ha. Crossing down. And up. Down. And up. To the ribs. Rubbing. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, reaching up. Bow up. Pressing down as you roll through the spine. Take yourself to a place of instability and build some heat. Here we go. And then coming back. You ready? You can rub the hands again or you can rub somewhere different. Off we go. Really good. Onto your centre. Circles. Get ready for the brushes. Crossing down, and up, crossing down, and up, ribs, side bend, rubbing vigorously, sending the heels of the hands forward, reaching up to the sky. Pressing down, rolling through the spine. Find a wheelie or a press up. Off we go. I'm doing running man while in a plank. Ready to come back. Okay, we're gonna go two more times through. Take a rest, this one if you need. But try and do the last one. Here we go, rubbing. Hands onto your centre. Circles, here we go. Brushes across the centre. Cross down and up. Cross down and up. Side bend. Rubbing vigorously. Reaching forwards. Rolling through the spine. Find a wheelie or a press up. Off we go. Hopefully you're feeling really warm. Keep going. Getting ready to come back up. Last time, rubbing. You do really well. On to the centre. Brushing across. Let it echo through the body now. Nice and easy in the torso. Cross. And up. Leave at the top of the head. Cross. And up. Side. Up to the armpits with the brush. Rubbing somewhere that you need. Reaching towards the screen. Up to the ceiling. Pressing down as you roll through for the last time.
then coming back to your upright or working position. Open the palms to the front and just feel that buzz and all that stuff traveling through you. Take a few deep breaths. And now, if you need to, grab a drink, but if not, let's keep going. So, we're gonna place our hands on our center. And take a few deep breaths into those palms. Now your center, as I said before, might not be in the same place as mine. Some people in stopgap have a higher center. So just check in. Where do you feel you have the potential for strength or the potential to cre create energy? Deep breath in. Breathe out. We're gonna move on to some visualization and a bit of guided improvisation. If you want to find out more about visualization and improvisation, check out our groundwork series on home practice. Now, I want you to imagine two silken threads attached to your center, a little bit like that of a spider's silk. They're flexible, but also strong as steel, and they're connected to your center. And I like to make sure that my thumb and my forefinger are connected too. This helps me really feel the connection, almost sends the energy back to my center. See if you can move your center with these threads. Or maybe your center can move the threads. But as the music comes on, just begin to have a little play with this connectivity between your fingers and your center. How high can you go before you lose that connection? How wide? How low? You can stay seated in your chair and shift within your chair. Or if you're a standing dancer, you can begin to transfer the weight and find the folds in the ankles. You can play with your focus. Can you still feel that thread when you don't look at it? or you can follow the hands with your focus. Five, four, three, two, one. Bring the hands back to your center and let's have an experiment. Let's try a different center. You might want to go high or you might want to go a little lower to feel your pelvic floor or you might want to try two. Have a little experiment of what works for you.
If your arms get heavy, just bring them closer, those threads. They don't have to be far. Maybe you can move away from the screen now. Maybe you can begin to wake up the back space as well. Five, four, three, two, one. Really nice. Grab a drink and then I'd like to show you an image. So I'd like to share with you an image. Uh, an image that was introduced to me when I was training by a friend, Laura Haynes. And she introduced me to Eric Franklin. And this is a great book and I'll put a link in the copy below if you want to check out some more of his imagery. But here I have an image that's really useful for when exercising the abdominals. So there's an image of a stomach and across the stomach are four strings that go across, vertically, horizontally, and both on the diagonal. And each string has a pair of beads on. So just picture that in your mind's eye and just imagine your center widening when you take a breath in. And then as you breathe out, the beads coming closer to your center. And we're gonna use this image, an image by Eric Franklin, to do the next exercise, which involves folds and balance. So in an upright position, and you can do this seated, but you might want to take your legs off of the foot plate and onto the floor if you can reach. But I want you to find a wide starfish shape, or like Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. We're reaching to all four corners, really connecting through our center. We take a deep breath in, and we imagine those beads gliding outwards. As we breathe out, those beads are gonna to come towards the center as we find a fold and curve in our upper body, softening our chest. We breathe in and we spread those beads. We breathe out and those beads come towards the center. We breathe in and they're nice and wide. Now this time, I want you to call your hands to the center. A little bit like when you press the button on the hoover and the cable comes in, or you press the button on the tape measure and it comes in. So it's like a magnet, a snatch. Deep breath in. Call it in. And press into your base to come back to your starfish. And as you exhale, a snatch. Press into your base to come to your Vitruvian man. From here, we're gonna find our way into a place of instability or a balance. I'm taking all my weight onto one side, one leg. And then I'm kind of skating or gliding my working leg. I'm also thinking about that image of the silken threads and I've still got my finger and thumb connected. And I'm just gonna play with a little bit of instability. You might wanna change your perspective by turning your skull. And I'm trying to connect these extremities my instep, my toes, my knuckles, to my center. The top of my head to my center. It might start to burn a little bit, but hopefully we're building 
a little strength. And then shake it off. And then we'll move over to the other side and pour our weight into one side of the body to play with instability, skating or gliding that other side. I'm keeping my toes on the floor but not putting any weight into them. I still got my thumb and my forefinger together to connect my center to these limbs that are floating. And this task was given to me by Yoshifumi Anao from Batsheva Dance Company. He came to work with Stop Gap quite a while away and he would be working with Gaga movement language. So again, there's a link below to find out more of that. Shake it off. We'll do the exercise again. And then the second time through, we'll find a little bit more instability, whether that be coming out of your chair, if you're available to blend standing dancing with seated dancing, or it might be shifting further away in your chair or going into a wheelie. For a standing dancer, you might want to play with lifting the legs or the limbs a little bit more. Let's try with some music. Take your mind back to that image from Franklin of the beads spreading and coming into the center. Spread wide like a starfish and take a deep breath in. Breathing out, bring those beads into the center and soften the chest. Deep breath in. Breathing out. Deep breath in. This time, call those hands. Make the decision. And back to starfish. And call it in. Back to starfish. Find a place of instability on one side. side find your way no matter how awkward onto the other side and when you're ready begin pouring your weight into one side and playing with your center controlling your extremities Off. Let's go back to the start in an upright position. Reach to all four corners like a starfish. Deep breath in. Spread the beads. Breathing out, bring them to the center. Press into your base. Reach to the corners. And fold and soften in the chest. Deep breath in. This time your center calls your hands. <sighs> Lengthen out. And again. <sighs> this time we transfer over to one side. Just see if we can just push it a little bit more. 
I like to really imagine that my center is like a control center, controlling these far away things, knuckles, instep, top of the head, roof of the mouth, tailbone, five, four, three, two, one, over to the other side, make your way over. And again, I've still got my thumb and my forefinger together. I'm creating space between my limbs. Keeping my ankles soft and buoyant. It might start to hurt. Make sure it's good hurt and you're building strength. Five, four, three, two, one, and shake it off. Maybe give yourself a little stretch if you need. Grab some water and then we'll move on to a guided improvisation. So I'm gonna share another image to support the connectivity of the center to our extremities. I'm gonna bring up on the screen an image of a spider's web. Don't worry, no spiders. But take a look at this spider's web. See the threads attaching and see how they're all connected and how the connection gets closer, nearer the center. Remember those silken threads of the improvisation at the beginning of the session that they were flexible, pliable, that they got caught on the breeze, but they were strong as steel and they were connected to the center. I'd like to keep this image up and I'd like us to just have a little play, improvisation, dance to some music. I'm gonna bring on some music and we're going to dance for three minutes with this image to remind us of that connection to the center. Maybe you want to attach your limbs to your room as you move your center to the music. If, that, if this image doesn't work for you, you can always go back to the Franklin image of the beads coming into the center and spreading wide. So find a place where you can settle, close your eyes if you need to, and see that spider's web. We're gonna dance for three minutes, and I may come back onto your screen moving, but I'm not gonna talk now until the end of the improvisation when I bring it to a close. Take this track for yourself.
gradually fade it down. Letting go of those two images, releasing that center. Five, four, three, two, one. Really nice. Grab a drink if you need it. And then we'll move on to the final exercise and phrase. So the next exercise is inspired by the choreographer, Gary Clark. He came to work with Stopgap quite a while back when I was a dancer and he taught a Cunningham class to us in the mornings. And he was one of the first choreographers that really made me move from the center. And he challenged me not to move unless I started from the center. So I'm gonna pass that challenge to you and ask you not to move unless you're initiating from your center. So let's begin. Find your working position in an upright position. I'm gonna reach my hand to the side, reach my arm, and I'm gonna let my ribs slide over. And then I'm gonna slice across to the front diagonal, top front diagonal. And then I'm gonna to open to the other front diagonal with my torso and the arm that I'm using is going to be a right angle above my head. Let's do that much again. So I've got one dominant side at the moment. So give that side that you're working with a bit of a rub so you know that this is the dominant side. You might have done this in Amy's groundwork video when she talks about learning and mapping material. So that dominant side is gonna reach to the side as I slide my ribs over. I'm gonna slice across to the front diagonal and I'm reaching to the top corner. And then I'm gonna to open to the other front diagonal with my torso and my arm, my dominant arm, is in a right angle above my skull. I'm then gonna reach my other arm as if it's touching that front diagonal that I'm facing and it's on a midline. From there, I'm gonna lob or throw underneath to the other front diagonal with my dominant arm. So we reach to the side, we slice across, we open in a right angle, we touch the corner, we throw underneath that arm. One more time. We slide to the side, we slice across to the front diagonal, we open to the other diagonal, we touch and we throw underneath. Last time. Side, slice, open, touch, throw. From here, this lower arm is gonna to go to my center and it's gonna brush across. And as I brush across, I'm almost opening a door with my other arm and hyperextending my ribs, letting my chest and throat open to the sky before my center calls my other hand in and I curve forward, looking down at my belly button. From the top, I slide my ribs to the side and reach. I slice across. I open to the other front diagonal. I reach to touch it. I throw underneath. I brush and I open the door and then I call it back in. Once more. Reach, slice, open, touch. Throw, open the door with counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, a little bit quicker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, hook again, slide, cross, ba, touch, throw, brush, brush. Last time, one, two, keep going, shun, harder together. Add a little bit more. From here, I'm gonna bind my palms together and then I'm gonna send them forward to the screen and up to the ceiling, keeping my face facing the front almost framing my head with my forearms. Real two-way stretch here, 
It's like an upward salute in yoga. Sits bones and heels pressing down into the ground or into our base. From here, we press the palms out to a T-shape whilst finding a high release to the ceiling. From here, I'm going to bring my middle fingers towards each other, hugging the space, bringing my belly button to my spine and looking into this circle that I've created with my arms. From here, I space lock my hands and I'm gonna ripple through, trying to keep my hands where they are and then letting them brush down the back of my skull and down the sides of my body. So, from binding the palms, the hands are bound. You send them up to an upward stretch for four counts. Then we press down for two with a high release. We come into a contraction or a curve for two. Then we ripple for four. Yes, from the top, we reach to the side, we slice across, we open to the corner, we touch the corner, we lob underneath, we brush for two, we come in on the count of eight. We bind the hand and send it to an upward salute for four counts. We open five, six, hug the space, seven, eight, ripple one, two, three, four. From here, we're gonna brush the center and the back space, or we're gonna place our hands on our wheels and we're gonna find a turn, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's do it once more through on the first side. And then I'm gonna give you some time to work it out on the second side before we try with some music. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Reach, slice, open, touch, throw, brush, together, one, two. Reaching up, press down for two, curve for two, ripple two, three, four, turn five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, it's harder to turn slowly than it is to turn quickly for me. Okay, let's try it on the left. I'm gonna practice, but you practice on your own too. Reaching, slicing, opening, touching, lob, brush, call it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ripple two, three, four, turn six, seven, eight. Keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Now, I think I may have already started to forget about my center and just go into making shapes. So before we try it with the music actually, let's try and do the exercise without the arms. Okay, this will play havoc with your memory, but hopefully engage your center again. Here we go. Slide, slice, turn, throw, brush, come in and stretch and then curve and then ripple. Can you turn initiating from your center? Other side, slide, slice, turn, throw, brush, come in, S upward salute, High release, pull it into your spine, ripple through, and see if you can turn from your center. Good. Okay, I'm gonna bring the music up and we'll just get used to doing that with some music. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, ah, whoo. Up, 
What's a loop? Two, three, four. Press down and curve. Ripple. Two, three, four, five, six. Other side. Oh, one, two, three. Touch. Brush. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ripple through. Two, three, four. Okay, have we got it? If you need to pause the video to practice, go for it. If not, we're going to try that again with the music a little louder. Ready? Six, seven, and a Two, three, four, press. Ripple through. Turning from the center. Six, seven, and a one. Five, six, seven, eight. One more time each side. A five, six, seven, and a reach. Five, six, curve, seven, eight. Ripple through. And turn. Last time, a reach. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, brush, five, six, seven, eight. Really good, really good. Grab a drink if you need, and then we're just going to take it to the next level if you've got room for more. But if you want to finish there, that's absolutely fine. Please like the channel, make a comment below, and subscribe to the channel and share it with other people you think might find it useful. This was a session requested by Hannah Sampson. So if you have a request, also pop, pop that in the comment box. We'd love to make this channel really useful to you. So I'd like you to find your way down onto the ground if it's possible, or just find a comfortable seat in your chair. And when you get to the ground, we're going to close our eyes. We're going to imagine that we're on a river and that our spine is being washed with the river and the tide and the stream. And any tension you feel in your spine is just going to be smoothed and washed downstream a little bit like the rocks or the pebbles getting smoothed by the water. Thank you.